about them, but I find them well fascinating. Her art is recognizable for its intense expression that broke new ground and defied convention. And through the course of her career, in many cases, she reversed the traditional idea of a male artist painting a female model. This is a painting from around 1942, a self-portrait of Elaine, a very strong, engaging image, self-portrait drawing. Brandon Fortune is the curator of the retrospective Elaine de Kooning Portraits at the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery. You may also find that some of her most energetic portraits are portraits of men. She conveyed their energy using a fluid style, making them appear still and in motion at the same time, a style that was part of a new art movement called Abstract Expressionism. It's extraordinary what we see here. She has, as I said, gained full confidence in her ability to paint. She painted her men standing, sitting, and sometimes faceless. Her subjects included friends and fellow painters like Robert De Niro Sr., father of the famous movie actor. He created his own particular kind of painting, and she's captured quite a, a ferocious expression in his face. And in fact, a New York gallerist said shortly after Elaine de Kooning's death that he thought this was perhaps her very best portrait. In a portrait from the early 1960s. And then this enormous group portrait called the Burgers of Amsterdam Avenue. She depicts black and Latino men from the streets of New York's Upper West Side. There was a time when the ball didn't always obey him. It was only hours of lonely practice as a boy that gave him this skill. Another career milestone, painting Pele, Brazil's World Cup football legend. How many portraits did Elaine paint of Pele? How did they come about? Well, she exhibited, I believe, four portraits of Pele in 1983. Um, Pele, I believe, had a home in Southampton, very close to Elaine's studio in East Hampton. And so it was arranged that he would come to her studio. She asked him to step outside because she said that Pele was an outdoors kind of guy. Uh, she had several sittings with him during that month. To that World Assembly of Sovereign States, the United Nations, our last best hope Perhaps her most famous works depict President John F. Kennedy. There are nine of them in the exhibit, including the one that permanently hangs in the collection of presidential portraits. This enormous portrait of President Kennedy was done during 1963, and it was the painting that captured how she saw him on the very first day that she met him. She remembered seeing him in Florida, and she described him as being incandescent and golden. She saw his charisma and was trying over the course of those months to capture that. Um, she was at the peak of her career, and this was the most important commission that she had during her career. She admired him very much and she felt a real responsibility to take the impressions that she had of him from her sittings and as an artist and merge them with what she called the world's view of him, that television image, those black and white photographs in newspapers. What do her paintings of President Kennedy tell us about her artistic process? Elaine moved back and forth between drawings and paintings all the time. And so she was doing drawings and watercolors when she was in front of the president, that those mediums were easy for her to transport. But then back in her studio, she was making paintings in various sizes. And do, do we have any indication of what President Kennedy thought of Elaine de Kooning? 
No, we don't, but we do know that his administration approved of Elaine de Kooning as an artist to make this portrait for the Truman Library. And one of my colleagues who's written for the exhibition catalog suggests that she was considered to be an appropriate modern artist to represent the administration's idea of the new frontier. And then early in 1965, this portrait was dedicated at the Truman Library, but all the rest of these drawings and paintings remained with Elaine de Kooning, and she would give them to people over time. She gave this to her very best friend, Ernestine Lassau, to wonderful charcoal. Right down the street from the house John F. Kennedy lived in as a senator in Georgetown is an art gallery in possession of two other Elaine de Kooning portraits. Art dealer Peter Colasante tells us they were acquired from an estate of one of de Kooning's friends. And I believe the chain was that when she died, she left them to her friend. And when her friend died, they were, they were sold in Dallas and we were able to purchase them. It works, it, it's almost as if he's sitting in a constellation of movement. Um, and it's, and, or he's not bound by time. It, it, it's a contemporary idea, it's a modern idea. It's a, it's a very new look. There's slashing diagonals and movements everywhere. Circles, some, it's like riotous color that ended up being him. They are off the market until the exhibit ends, but Colasante thinks the painting could sell for up to a million dollars. But who would be the buyer? If it would matter if it was a Democrat or a Republican, or no, if it was someone no. from another country. When I first acquired this painting, and President Bush was in office, Mrs. Bush would visit the gallery on occasion, looking for things, and, or things for the home or the White House, and she saw this picture one time. And uh, then I put it away. And after the president was no longer in office, she came one day and she said, um, do you still have that picture of Jack Kennedy? And I said, yeah. She said, where is it? I said, well, it's up on the second floor. She said, do you think, and she was with a friend of hers, do you think we could go upstairs and, and you could take a picture of us with him? And so I said, well, I don't know if your husband would approve. She said, no, I have had a crush on Jack Kennedy since I was 12 years old. So we did it, went upstairs and we took a picture. So it's a person like that, someone who loves Kennedy and who loves the idea of this painting. That's the buyer. Elaine de Kooning compared painting to falling in love, slowly getting to know her subject with each line, sketch, and sweeping, slashing stroke of color. And with the exhibit of over 60 of her works, at the National Portrait Gallery, viewers could find themselves falling in love with Elaine de Kooning, too.